You're listening to Combat Radio with Ethan Dettenmeyer, right here on L.A. Talk Radio. Hey, Mr. Dirk Benedict, please. This is he. Uh, this is us here on Combat Radio. How are you? Combat Radio, I like that. Who are you at war with? Uh, all the bad <laughs> guys. Who are you fighting? Uh, well, you know what? Who are you in combat with? We fight social injustice wherever we may find it, much like the A-Team did. In hey, the my kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs> so do I. That's why I'm hiding out in the woods. <laughs> you know, we were just talking a little bit about your rather amazing career, which most of us are enamored by because we grew up on some of your material. But uh, we were talking about the skill set behind the A-Team and their and their and the way that you guys, uh, first of all, you got the, the role, the womanizing uh, you know, guy, the handsome guy that always got the babe. That's a rough part to play, Dirk. It was. You're joking, <laughs> but it, you know it's true. Have you ever had a relationship? Have you ever had relationships with a woman? Uh, a or a relationship with women? Yeah. It's not easy. It's yeah, difficult. Too true. Yeah. It was. It was. It was. Uh, well, first of all, it was great fun because of uh, the nature of the show. It was at its heart. It was. Uh, it was a comedy. You know, it was, um, it was, we, 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 there were two things we tried to do. It was, hang, it was a, it was a moral play, a, a little morality play each week, and we wanted to hang on to that, good versus bad. I won't say evil, but good versus bad. And the second was we wanted it to be entertaining, which meant funny. It was very tongue-in-cheek. It was self-deprecating. Let me put it that way. I played the ladies, man, but it was a bit tongue-in-cheek. Yeah. I mean, which was which was kind of hard. I mean, he wasn't a full-on James Bond, or uh, you know, he was not uh, Han Solo. I mean, he was he was it was always he was a little bit off balance and and sort of which I which I introduced to the character. He was written a little more dead on the money, you know, a, a TV kind of hunky ladies man, and I turned him into a little bit of a uh, he gets he gets rattled, but he always manages. It's because if you watch the show, Face Man was the guy that got punched. Got tossed out of windows. He was always, you know, the victim. <laughs> you know, there's a, I'm remember, rising above it. it ri rising, uh, always rising above it. Always. Yeah. There's a hilarious line in one episode I distinctly remember all yeah, these years later. Huh? This way? No, there's a Go ahead. there's a hilarious line I remember all these years later where you were holding the rest of the team up and they were like, "Come on, face!" and you come out of the restroom zipping up like your your style kit and you're like, "Perfection takes time." <laughs> I didn't write all that stuff. We had wonderful writers in the beginning. Stephen J. Cannell, bless his heart, who just passed away a week ago, you know, the writer-creator of that show, nice. along with Frank Lupo, and both of them could write the pants off of... of they wrote a kind of, 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 of character that I just loved doing. You know, Frank uh, 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 Cannell wrote that part for me. Of course, NBC refused to hire me. So I was not in the pilot, but after the pilot, I don't know what went down, but Stephen called me up here in Montana where I was hanging out and, and uh, determined to leave the business. But uh, And he says, no, nah, you still want to do the part. So they fired the other guy, and I got to come down and wow. do that. It's a, it's a certain kind of writing, which you don't see much anymore. It's very male and very uh, kind of fast and, uh, and, and fun, you know. It was fun to do. It was I used to sort of complain a little bit because I always had the scenes with the girl which which were kind of fun but uh, I was always dealing with an actress every week and they would be nervous and it was as opposed to the other guys Mr. T only you know had one or two lines an episode and Dwight did his crazy thing and George gave orders but I was always had to kind of make the girl at ease you know and and then these scenes they would they were a little harder to do the scenes with Dwight Schultz or B.A., Mr. T., or George, we did those without rehearsing pretty much. We all learned our lines and then got in front of the camera and did it. Uh, I remember after the A-Team was over, I, I did some guest shots on shows like oh, Murder, She Wrote, and Hotel, and and I was amazed at how slow it was. It would take eight days to shoot these these indoor you know dramas, and we were shooting that A-Team in, in six and seven days on location with gunfire and fist was, fights and exploding that... windows and crashing cars and kissing girls and running and dodging <laughs> bullets. And, and we would do them in seven days, but we didn't rehearse. They would set the cameras up. They would, you know, we'd walk through it for the cameras, and then we would just go for it. Someone said... I loved that. It was wild and woolly. It was crazy. And, and I think a lot of the craziness... You know that that came across on screen. I always say it was it was it was zanier off camera than it was on. 
Well, Mr. T. We never sat in our motorhomes. Well, we didn't have them. Maybe that's why. <laughs> you didn't have them? Really? Why, why did NBC... George ref- Bard had a motorhome, but the other three of us had trailers. Why, why did NBC refuse to hire you at first? Because you were a big name. NBC? Yeah. Was- uh, no, well, I was, I'd was. i done Battlestar Galactic, and Stephen Cannell had seen me do that, and he liked it. He liked that. That's why the characters, they're very similar. Uh Starbuck was a fully dimensional character. Face Man was kind of one dimensional, you know. And and uh, but uh, no, NBC. I don't know. You know, uh, they they never liked. I never worked at NBC before or after that. They they said I wasn't wasn't handsome enough. They they had a guy who was going to be the most handsome guy in television. And I mean that's the truth. That's what went down. And I I went through this for six months because. Stephen, I had met Stephen and gone on and, and, and read for him, and, and I was always going to do it starting back in May or June of, 2000, or of 1982. And then, you know, one thing led to another, and we ran into trouble. And then at the end of the day, you know, I got a call on a Friday night saying they hired another guy. So mm. oh, man. it was Painful. heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking. Yeah. It was in November. They went off and shot the pilot, and I, I was up in Montana duck hunting. Every mm-hmm. every duck I shot was another NBC executive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there goes Tardikoff. Oh, there goes Joel Thurm, the casting director. <laughs> I got him. I got him. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then you have them for I don't dinner. know. I often think, you know, if, if I hadn't got to do that show, I probably would have been, that would have been it for me in the business. What would you have done, done in Montana? Well, I figured if you couldn't get a job that was written for you, then one of the most successful writer producers in the business Stephen Cannell right. was was uh, on a roll he was just starting his ascendancy he'd done Rockford Files sure. he he'd worked before that on 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 what was it uh, oh, what was it what was it? the uh, the web show Jack Webb show uh, uh the uh, dragnet uh, yeah no after that he did but anyway he was he'd done Rockford and he was he was off and going and and had a lot of influence with the networks, but they they dug their heels in. They said, "We'll let you have George Papard uh, and Dwight Schultz, but but because uh, they had wanted somebody else for uh, Hannibal too." But Cannell got his way, except he sacrificed me. You know, I was I was the one that got lost in the shuffle. Wow. Well, not true. But yeah. it all turned out well. I I uh, I got the call and. Uh, was very happy to join the party. Yeah. Mm. Mr. T had yet another fool to pity, as it were. <laughs> yeah, you know, I I uh I had read the script, you know, the original script, the pilot way back when and and I remember I my agent understood it too, but I knew this was a wonderful pilot. Then I didn't get to do it, but I when I was gonna, when they called me up and I was gonna do the show, I went in. We had a read through of the first script we were going to do, and I met George Papard and Mr. T and Dwight Schultz. I'd never met them, nor had they met me. And we sat around a table at Tamil's offices and read the script. And it was one of the I will never forget it. I could I could talk about it for a while, but it was one of the most electric experiences I've ever had. It was it was so bizarre because you know I I had been in the business for a while. I'd done Broadway plays and. And I'd done three or four or five films. I'd started Battlestar, and I'd done another TV pilot before this. So I had, and I I knew the actors and the way it worked. And this was nothing like that. Mr. T was not an actor. Dwight was highly eccentric and and wound really tight and very smart, and sort of. And George was very willful, and 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 there was this. Around this, and then Stephen Cannell was sitting at the head of the table, and he immediately lost control of the whole thing. <laughs> and we're reading this, wow! And it was so funny because everybody was just more interesting than the actual characters they were playing. Mm. I left that to make a long story short. I called my agent. I said, "I tell you, if we get on the screen, you know, fifty percent of what was around that table." This show is going to be great because Mr. T. I had never met him. I only knew him by reputation. I said, "This guy is really interesting. He's funny. He's profound and profane in one sentence. He can he can be profane and profound. He's very spirit. He's he's got the quickest mind. And Dwight is funny. And George is uh, is hard to describe. He was very." Uh, 
oh, was it? controlling. He was very controlling, but he had a great sense of 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 what what the what needed to be done to make something work and it, it, to to make the actual script work. And uh, oh, it was and it was stayed like that for four years. It was a buzzsaw. Mm. Every day I went to work, it was like wow. How many how many uh, how many episodes were you shooting a, a season? Twenty four. Twenty four. Twenty four. Twenty four hours. Some of them were two hour shows. 